Welcome back to LearnPiezo.org, free class on piezoelectricity. And last time we went over these equations, but describe the piezoelectric material's response to a electric field and to a stress. In an electric field, we can get strain, and from a stress, we can get polarization, aka charge, aka electric field. But this is actually not the whole story here. We actually have uh, we actually uh, are missing a huge portion in this description of piezoelectric materials. That is um, the basic response of the material. So if we have stress or strain, and for any material, rubber, plastic, metal, uh, we have a relationship between stress and strain via the elastic compliance. And for polarization, or what, which we're going to call dielectric displacement which, or electric displacement which we're going to be describing soon uh, which for now let's assume it's equivalent to the polarization uh, this is equal to the permittivity multiplied by the electric field the dielectric displacement and the so this is the basic response of any material and if we add in the piezoelectric portion we have here It simply adds on. So there you go. These are what is called the constitutive equations. And they're more specifically, the top one is known as the actuator equation. Why? Because it tells us the strain. You know, we normally want to move something in the actuator application. Uh, the bottom um, term is known as the sensor equation. Again, these uh, formulas can be written in many different ways. Uh, because, for example, you can multiply everything, divide everything by the the, the elastic compliance. So you'd have you'd end up with this equation. In rearranging this, you could solve for stress. And we can write ds as e, which is another parameter. And this would actually be minus. So look, we just wrote the actuator equation again, yeah, but we wrote it in a different term, in a different way. So really, you can rearrange the equations, or you, and you actually can run into these equations in many different forms. But they all basically have come from this. You just basically multiply area or multiply uh, some parameter uh, to get it to look a little different, depending on what parameter you're after. So again, we have the uh, strain as a function of the stress, as a function of electric field. And we have to qualify this uh, description. Uh, we have to say that this is under constant electric field, and this is what this E means, and I'll be describing what that is in a second. But note that these material parameters are measured under certain conditions. And also, this bottom equation is also measured under constant stress, this permittivity. And we'll, we'll <laughs> describe why that's important and why, how boundary conditions affect material properties and what equations you can use to model the constitutive equations. So now, uh, we'll describe what is dielectric or electric displacement. So, in a general terms, so generally, for dielectric materials, the dielectric displacement is noted by the permittivity of free space multiplied by electric field plus the polarization in the material. So we add both of these components and we get the dielectric displacement, namely the all the charge in the material which moves. Uh, not just to the not just due to the material. But uh, to write this more simply, um, we can you know resolve this equation and this is done elsewhere. Uh, very often, so I'm not going to do it here again. This is something you can barely have a lot of resources online for. But essentially, you, you can resolve both of these components 
uh, into a relative dielectric permittivity, which we can multiply by the um, free space permittivity to get the dielectric displacement. Yeah, I need the total charge uh, you know, displacement in the material, which is known as the dielectric displacement, whose units are coulombs per meter squared. So now we'll discuss how the um, stress portion, how that all fits into the equation. So we have the stress portion, but we can also uh, generate charge due to stress in a piezoelectric material, as we know. So therefore, by adding this piezoelectric portion here, we can completely account for all the charge uh, displacement in the material. So this, this kind of thing is called all, you know, all the charge. It has to do with all the charge. Next, I will describe how boundary conditions affect uh, piezoelectric material properties. We'll be doing that in the next uh, video. Thanks for listening.